let's figure out agents. We'll uh, let's do it together. Uh, so this is a pretty cool video. What I'm going to show you here is, if you remember, one of the first videos I shot was this one, and in here I created a chatbot, and I linked it to industrial data through something I call function calling, so APIs that Hibot had exposed, and I was kind of manually walking through. Hey, can you look at the factory? Hey, can you read a machine? Hey, is the machine an alarm? And all the way to, hey, can you generate a work order? Generate an email for the customer to let them know. But it was manual, right? I'm going one step at a time. So now I'm going to do it with an agent, and I'm going to do it, I'm going to one-shot it. So I'm going to write out the instructions of what I want the agent to do, and rather than all the back and forth, I'm going to allow the agent to run. I'm going to expose the same API that I exposed when I was manually talking, right? but I'm going to remove the interaction, the human in the loop. So you might, for some of the context of this video, you might need want to go back and watch this one quick just to see the manual process that I went through. And then you'll see that the agentic AI, when I do with that, it might make some more sense. The other thing, last week I shot a video on MCP, Model Context Protocol. I'm going to be using that heavily to allow the agents to discover what data Highbyte has exposed, what industrial data is exposed. So this, this is uh, key to getting the agents to, to work. Okay. So I've got Hybite over here, it's running a container. I've got, just like in that first video, I've got a namespace with three conveyors in it and pretty basic information that these things are exposing. So is it an alarm? What's its speed, its status, target speed, and how long has it been, been running? So pretty minimal. I'm storing that data locally in Pi as well, the, the historical data. Um, and then I've got an API that I'm exposing through Hybite, and this is what the LLM sees, right? So these are all of the methods what, what MCP calls tools that the agent can call to get access to or perform operations on industrial data. And I won't go into all of these. As part of this video, I'll probably peel this out so that people can have this project and they can try this out um, themselves. If I connect MCP Inspector to look at what uh, Highbyte's exposing right now and I go to Tools and, and List, um, <laughs> let me reconnect. There you go. You can see that those pipelines are exposed over MCP and they take methods and all that. But so this is what the LLM, excuse me, the agent, it's easy to mix terms, is going to be using. So let's, I'm going to show you two tools I use to create agents. I think the really important part is not necessarily the correct agent or agent platform. <laughs> the really important part is this. It's this is the interface to my industrial data that I'm exposing. And then I'm going to show you I can use multiple agents. Uh, and completely different platforms to do roughly the same thing. <laughs> so the first the first thing I started with is a, it's a product called N8N and I'm running this in Docker. It's really easy. You can find it online how to set this up. <laughs> and this is really, my understanding, it's more of an ETL-like tool. And then they added an agent block or agent capability. And this is nice because they provide a nice visual way to see what the agent is doing that makes it make sense. So in here, I've dragged in the agent um, node, which you can find over here. <laughs> now an agent has an LLM that backs it, large language model. So in this case, I'm connected to AWS Bedrock. And if you go in here, I'm using um, Claude as the backend LLM. The other thing the agent needs is the tool set. So what are the APIs or tools that I can call when I need access to industrial data? So in this tool, in, in N8N, what I've done is I've connected two tools. One's an MCP client that simply lists all the tools that are exposed by the MCP server, AKA these set of APIs. <coughs> and then this one calls individual tools. And the way this is doing it is dynamically, it's passing in the tool name. So the LLM says, hey, I need to call this tool. Here's the name of the tool. And, and that gets dynamically populated here. Okay, so this took very little effort to set up, right? I've got my API set up for industrial data. Same one I used in the first demo. And the, the hardest thing is I've got to go type out everything that I did in that first demo. So I'm not going to read this to you, but this is what I did. You know, go look at the factory, read all the conveyors. If a conveyor is in an alarm state, you know, go get the history, etc. <clears throat> now, one thing before I launch this, I am simulating this and I do have uh, one of my conveyor one is currently an alarm. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this text into the chat. And we'll see what it does. So you can see it went in, it's, it's reaching out to the LLM, it just listed all the tools, and now it's going to start, basically it broke this prompt down into tasks that it needs to accomplish, and it's visually executing those tasks, and it's update, the UI is updating to show us what it's doing. This is the long one, right? So it's going to get historical data from Pi, 
we could see that by going into high byte and the get history pipeline's probably running if we were looking at the counts we would see and we could turn on replay to see exactly what it's doing here uh, and what's cool in this tool is if you click over here as it kind of goes through you can see uh, and I think I don't think it's the tool necessarily that's providing this I think Claude does this where it's showing you exactly what it's doing so here's the prompt uh, first I'm going to list all the tools <coughs> then now I'm going to retrieve the machines in the factory and we'll come back with the three conveyors I'm going to see if each one's static you know I'm going to see if there's an alarm so it happened to read the first conveyor it, it would have read all three it happened to read the first one and see that there's an alarm okay it just finished so it finished that task and it also outputs here so it says hey conveyor status it's currently an alarm Oh, with an inconsistent speed range. So the range is from 25 to 79. That's from the historical data when the target was from 50 to 100. <coughs> uh, previous work orders had one in March 15th, scheduled uh, bearing, fixing on the bearing, and then March 21st, speed variation issues. Uh, and then it, it noticed that it went and say, hey, there's a current production order that's, that's going, and I've created a maintenance work order. We can go in. and see this is the work order it created <laughs> with the reasoning that it injected in there uh, and then it, it drafted an email now I, I don't think I've been having trouble trying to get it to uh, based on this data there's certain delays like hey this last delay was six hours um, to try to predict if it would be able to hit the ship date <laughs> that's in the ERP system and it doesn't look like it tried to do that prediction but you can see it did a lot, right? And what's what I said, what's really cool about this tool, and I think this is partly Claude as well, is if I click on the last node here, you can visually see it'll type out everything that it did. Um, so this is the historical data it went and grabbed. You can see there's a lot of it. <coughs> so it'll take me a minute to scroll through here. A couple minutes. Uh, then it got to the end. Based on the history, I can see some interesting patterns. So it inferred for something from the history. And I think this is right. Like I probably set it into an alarm about three minutes ago. <laughs> it tried to adjust the target speed. Went and read it again and noticed that it was uh, still an alarm. It went and grabbed uh, the work orders, generated a work order, <coughs> and then ultimately output. So again, you might have to watch that first video to see what I manually did. But this is pretty cool, right? I mean, I basically defined the API in Hybyte. I linked it to the agent with MCP. All I did, you know, brief little setup, and I injected a prompt, and it went through and logically figured out how to do that, and <coughs> it got it mostly right. I'm fairly impressed, right? Like, obviously, you'd have to run this a bunch of times to see how consistent it is, but that shows promise and potential. Um, okay, so let's flip over, and I'll show you another agent that I used to do this. <laughs> this one is OpenAI added MCP support a couple weeks back. Uh, currently, they, their agent stuff is really exposed through an agent SDK that's in Python. So I don't have the visual interface, but what I can show you um, <coughs> is the Python code, essentially. So it, it, there's not much of it, right? We're talking about 40 lines of Python at 48. Uh, and essentially in here, if you look at this code, I have the instructions. Now, I did something a little different in here. And before I hit the demo, just to show how this works, <coughs> I'm going to remind myself to go back in and take that conveyor out of alarm. So this is just the simulated data that I'm, I'm generating. So in, in this tool, I had, I had trouble saying, hey, monitor the conveyors over time and then trigger the rest of the logic when one of the conveyors went into alarm. I think I can build a loop in here that would have made it do it, but I was struggling to do that, to create like a while loop, essentially. Now... Uh, if we back out to the Python code, I was struggling with OpenAI's Python agent, the same thing, right? I couldn't in a single prompt get it to mon consistently monitor all the conveyors and then trip the rest of the logic when a conveyor went into alarm. So to solve, to solve that, what I did is I created two agents. So in here, I have the instructions for a troubleshooting agent that basically is everything after a conveyor goes into an alarm, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to read history. I want you to uh, look for work orders, email the customer, that kind of thing. And then uh, a monitoring agent that simply just sits there and reads the conveyors and then hands off to the troubleshooting agent when that agent goes into alarm. 
so that's why there's a little bit more code here, but essentially, you know, point it at the MCP server, define the agents with the two instruction prompts, <coughs> and then in the code you define a handoff. So this is the monitoring agent, and when the monitoring agent trips, it's going to hand off to the troubleshooting agent, and that's pretty much it. Now to run this one, what I'm going to do, it's in Python. So you could, I could have built some UI around this, but you know, uh, I'm sure plenty of people will. But I'm just going to run the Python script. So you can't really see visually from the command prompt what's going on. But what's cool is OpenAI has tracing too. So if I go into here, you can see I trick. I, this is their tracing of their agents. I can go in here. And there's no alarm, so currently it's the controls engineer agent that's going off. So before that loops too many times, <coughs> I'm going to go set an alarm. And I don't think this updates in real time. So this, this should cause an alarm to trip, and we should see the handoff. So this is the controls engineering monitor agent. <coughs> and at some point, uh, they read a machine where alarm came back is true. Right, so it passed it off to the troubleshooting agent, and now we can start to see, just like in the other tool, right, it lists all the tools that are available in MCP. I mean, just like N8N, right, and then it's going to go through and run all the logic. So it's going to read machine history, it's going to try to adjust the target speed to clear the alarm, <coughs> and it's logically, again, it logically broke the prompt down, and it's going through each step, calling out on tools. Now, the one thing that's missing that I couldn't find in OpenAI, and this makes me think it's a Claude thing, is in between here, there isn't the reasoning. Like, hey, I went and read the history, and I kind of inferred some of this. And from that, hey, I tried to adjust the machine. Um, it doesn't include the reasoning. <laughs> and there might be a way to enable that. I just haven't found it yet. Uh, you can see it created a maintenance work order. We can jump back here. Slightly different, right? But same same gist. Uh, it tried to adjust the target speed. It was still an alarm. It went and got the customer information. And lastly, it, it generated the email prompt. And the email prompt, <coughs> uh, so it didn't generate. So it's asking me at the end if, if I should generate the email. It d does infer all the logic of everything that it saw there and did, um, but it doesn't actually generate the email prompt. So that might be... That probably has something to do with my prompting, right? That sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I might want a third agent in here that's just responsible for communicating out to the customer. Uh, but yeah, with very little code and the right API exposed to the agent, I just did something that you know took me, what was the video? A 12 minute video of manually typing and kind of showing and I executed it automatically. So you can kind of think, I mean, in my opinion, you can kind of think of an agent as like, uh, it's it's a while loop that's feeding the LLM with a little bit of a state machine to control when it should break and when it should not. And as long as you have exposed the correct data set and the operations for that LLM to be effective, it can do some pretty cool things. I'm going to continue to, to dive into this to see how far I can take it. But I wanted to show this initial video just to say, hey, with MCP and the right API, you know, in two completely different tools with very little effort, I was able to do a workflow that I think is fairly interesting. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for more. But if you want to try this out, reach out. I can get you a build with MCP in it. And then I can also share any of the artifacts from the build to get you, get you going. But uh, pretty cool.